जय हिंद दोस्तों दिस इज अनन्या योर मास्टर टीचर एट वेदांतु फॉर सोशल साइंस कैसे हो सब लोग हाउ आर यू ऑल आई एम श्योर यू पीपल आर टेकिंग वेरी गुड केयर ऑफ योर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल गैस टुडे बिफोर आई टेल यू व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो बिफोर दैट लेट मी टेल यू गैस इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल टू वेदांतु नाइन्थ एंड टेंथ इंग्लिश चैनल सो लेट मी वेलकम यू गैस टू द फैमिली ऑफ वेदांतु नाइन्थ एंड टेंथ इंग्लिश चैनल डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल शेयर दिस वीडियो विद योर फ्रेंड्स and grow this channel because end of the day this is your channel all right okay so guys what i'm going to teach you in this particular video people in this video i'm going to teach you guys the mass phase of the national movement that is between 1915 to 1947 basically this era is also known as gandhian era okay because gandhi ji was like more uh, like dominating he was more he was dominating the freedom struggle between 1915 and 1947 so people i'm going to tell you the contribution given by gandhi ji during this particular period all right great and guys one more thing i wanted to tell you like in every session guys i always give some homework questions in between the sessions so guys today also in between the videos i'm going to give you some homework questions make sure that you guys are giving me the answer in the comment section Uh, why first of all guys it will help me to understand how many students are seriously watching my video till the end all right so guys if you know, want to know more about the freedom struggle like what was a contribution given by gandhi ji so i want you guys to be there till the end of this video all right so people without any further delay let's get started now guys first of all let me tell you i am very very proud to tell you that vedantus students are unstoppable guys guys outstanding result in jwe 3 uh, jwe mains third attempt wherein students in vedantu have got 100 percentile yes 29 in physics 7 in chemistry 9 from mathematics yes these are the results so okay you guys can also achieve such kind of uh, results you guys can also get such kind of marks if you guys join us on vedantu's 9th and 10th english channel also and on our platform as well i will guide you guys how you guys can take our pro subscription okay chalo guys let's get started now you will find a person on the right hand side of the screen guys this personality is mahatma gandhi yes so people today in this particular video i am going to tell you about the contribution given by mahatma gandhi basically guys the era between year 1915 and 1947 that entire era is also known as gandhi era because gandhi ji was more prominent or more dominant in this particular era now guys uh, he came to india in 1915 january 1915 to be very specific before that guys gandhi ji was in south africa now the very first question for everyone and i want you guys to tell me the answer in the comment section what gandhi ji was doing in south africa all right as i told you gandhi ji came in india in january 1915 so what he was doing in south africa uh, back then before 1915 all right now guys as i told you 1915 to 1947 that era is also known as gandhi era now guys when he came into india what he saw he visited different parts of india Now, guys, what he saw there there was a lot of racial discrimination in India. Like Indians were considered as inferior, and Britishers used to think themselves as superior. So there was a lot of discrimination, guys, and the situation of India was definitely not good. It was miserable, guys. Now Gandhi ji thought to do something to get out of this situation. Now, guys, he came up with an amazing idea to fight against the Britishers, and that was basically fighting with peace. Yes, so he came up with the idea of satyagraha. So people, what what is satyagraha? Satyagraha in simple sense is basically fighting, but peaceful. So fighting with peace was basically satyagraha. Now guys, when he started satyagraha, guys, he went to different parts of India. Okay, he did satyagraha, and he was successful in doing so. Like for example, let me tell you about the case of Champaran. He went to Champaran back in nineteen seventeen, in year nineteen seventeen. that was related to indigo plantations then he went to kheda in 1918 then to amdavad in again once again in 1918 amdavad was related to mill strike so basically guys he went to different parts of india and he did satyagraha and he was successful in doing so okay he started getting the support of the masses now guys during his entire era he basically introduced three movements 
नॉन कोऑपरेशन सिविल डिसोबीडियंस एंड क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट ऑल राइट नाउ गैस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो गैस आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट टू इंपॉर्टेंट मूवमेंट्स नॉन कोऑपरेशन एंड सिविल डिसोबीडियंस मूवमेंट ऑल राइट लेट्स स्टार्ट विद नॉन कोऑपरेशन मूवमेंट व्हिच वाज स्टार्टेड इन ईयर 1920 All right. Let's understand, guys. What were the circumstances which led to the starting of non-cooperation movement? Now, students understand what is the meaning of non-cooperation, not cooperating with the Britishers, basically. All right. Now, guys, let's understand the circumstances, the situations which led to this non-cooperation movement. First of all, guys, Khilafat movement was started by Ali brothers. Guys, there was a Khilafat movement which was started by the Indian Muslims in India to support the Khalif. Uh, Now, guys, Khalif, who is Khalif, guys? He is the religious head of the Muslims. So, let me tell you, guys, back in 1918, when the First World War ended, last time I told you guys about the First World War, which lasted for four years. So, guys, when First World War ended in year 1918, at that time, Turkey was defeated in First World War. and lot of insulting treaties were sanctioned upon the turkey so to support the caliph of turkey muslims from all over the world they gave their support to the caliph the religious head of the muslims in a similar way a movement started in india by the indian muslims to support the caliph of turkey are you understanding and this movement came to be known as khilafat movement now guys try to understand Gandhi ji took the advantage of this situation. What Gandhi ji thought? Let's unite. Let's support the cause of Muslims because if we will support the cause of Muslims, there will be unity between Hindus and Muslims once again. Now, the second question for a uh, homework from this video is: I want you guys to tell me what led to the division between Hindus and Muslims. Let me know in the chat box. All right. So guys, Gandhi ji thought that this is the best way to have unity between Hindus and Muslims, and if we support the cause of Muslims, it uh, we will have a unity, and this unity will help us to gain independence. All right. Now guys, one more thing started in India, and it was started by Britishers. That was known as Rolak Act. Now people, something extra I wanted to tell you. Rolak Act was also known as Black Act. Okay, let me uh, write it down on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So people, Rolak Act was also known as Black Act. B L A C K. It was also known as Black Act. Guys, you should know this thing. Guys, what was Rolak Act? Means anyone who goes or who protests or who speaks against the government will be put behind the bars without any trial. Now, guys, what is the meaning of trial? Guys, it is a process in the court of law wherein uh the judge listen to the evidences and accordingly decides if the person is guilty of the crime or not so without any trial any person can be put behind the bars anyone who speaks against the government anyone who protests against the government that person will be put behind the bars without any trial yes so that is why this act came to be known as black act or roll act act now guys one more deadly incident took place in india guys that was in amritsar and that came to be known as jallianwala bagh massacre guys jallianwala bagh massacre took place on 13th of april 1919 third question guys i want you guys to name the person who is held responsible for this massacre okay who was held responsible for this massacre i want you guys to name that person in the comment section clear this is a third homework question now now guys basically this incident happened in jallianwala bagh that was a ground guys and wherein guys the government says the british government says that nearly 350 people died in this particular massacre but do you know congress says that more than 1000 people were killed in this massacre guys this incident happened on 13th of april 1919 Guys, still, if you visit that place, you will find bullet marks over there. Yes. Now, guys, at a special session. So after this, guys, what happened? 
uh, at a spe special session of Congress held in Kolkata on September 4th, 1920, a sp special resolution was adopted accepting the non-cooperation movement. And finally, after all these activities which took place in India, we finally decided to launch a countrywide non-cooperation movement. So guys, the non-cooperation movement was launched to press three main demands. Okay, the very first related to Khilafat issue. Second one, whatever happened in Punjab related to Jallianwala Bagh massacre. And third one, attainment of Swaraj Yoga. That was our ultimate goal, ultimate goal. So where the non-cooperation movement evoked great response, like people from across India, they responded in a positive way. How? Many Indians returned their degrees, their titles, the awards and the honours, whatever was given to them by the Britishers. Thousands of Indians left their government jobs. We started popularizing the Swadesh, it means boycotting the foreign goods and using Indian made goods. That is Khadi. Okay. But after this entire support, an incident took place in India. That was in Chauri Chora, guys. That was in uh, Bihar. Guys, Chauri Chora make incidents were wherein 22 policemen were killed on the spot. So, guys, in Chauri Chora incidents, what happened? Uh, some Satyagrahis where uh, some people were protesting against the government and government started uh, like the police started lati charge on these Satyagrahis. Guys, these Satyagrahis became so violent, so enraged that they set the entire police station on fire and 22 policemen were killed on the spot. Guys, after this incident, guys, try to understand Gandhiji was a non violent person. So, he wanted that his followers should behave in a way what Gandhiji wanted like in a non-violent way but this incidence of uh, like setting entire police station on fire and killing 22 policemen on the spot was against the ideology of Gandhiji and uh, finally guys uh, after this incident the Gandhiji suspended the entire movement this led to Gandhiji suspending the entire movement yes so people that was non-cooperation movement. So guys, if we talk about the importance of this movement, let's understand the importance. First of all, the national movement became a mass movement. People from across India participated in this movement. It instilled new confidence among the people that yes, we can fight against the Britishers. It transformed Congress from deliberative assembly into a moral fighting force. Till now, it was believed as that Congress was just a deliberative assembly, just an organization wherein, wherein we discuss and we have some grievances. We keep all these grievances in front of the Britishers and this is how we proceed. Only discussion takes place. Till now, this was the ideology. But after the non-cooperation movement, people realized that this Congress, this organization, this political party is not just a deliberative assembly, but yes, this organization can also fight for the freedom. Yes. So this was the importance of non-cooperation movement. Guess it also fostered Hindu-Muslim unity once again, because here Indian National Congress supported the cause of Muslims. Yes by supporting Khilafat movement. It shattered the myth that the British rule was for the betterment of Indians. So guys, till now, Britishers used to tell the Indians that we are here for the betterment of your society, economically, politically, and every, like in every aspect of life, you guys will be improved. But during this movement and after this movement, we Indians realized that it was just a myth that they are there for the betterment of Indians. Yes, it also promoted social reforms, special uh, like several steps were taken to the direction of the prohibition law. So like many things were prohibited guys. So many uh, positive social reforms took place after this movement. Now, guys, after the ending of this movement guys, the very next movement which was started in 1930 and guys that was civil disobedience movement. Guess how this civil disobedience movement started, let me tell you guys. Gandhiji went on a salt march. Now guys, what was salt march? Uh, I would like to write down some, okay, no problem. I will say uh, this orally guys. Guess this movement started on 12th of March 1930. 
when uh, guess uh, once upon a time guess what happened gandhi ji wrote a letter to viceroy irwin at that time uh, irwin was the viceroy of india so gandhi ji wrote a letter to irwin stating 11 demands stating total 11 demands and none of the demands were considered by irwin now guess one of those 11 demands was abolition of taxes on salt theek hai because according to gandhi ji salt was freely available in the nature and it is used by everyone from poor to rich so no taxes should be imposed on the salt and this recommendation or this demand by the gandhi ji was rejected so guys he started a salt mar- salt march from sabarmati till dandi guys it was a journey of 24 days he started on 12th of march 1930 and he reached dandi nearly on 5th of april 1930 and finally the very next day on 6th of april 1930 he went on to the uh, sea shore on dandi he picked up the salt and broke the salt tag means the meaning of this statement is finally the country wide civil disobedience movement was started people do you know when he started this movement on 12th of march 1930 he started his journey with 78 of his followers and by the time after 24 days when he reached dandi thousands of followers joined him in between guys he covered a distance of 385 kilometers yes so this is how the civil disobedience movement started all right now guys we will understand uh, the, there were many causes guys for the starting of the civil disobedience movement one of the cause which is given to you on the screen is the simon commission now what was simon commission let's understand this it was an all british commission which was appointed on november 1927 to have some constitutional reforms in india okay but guys in this commission there was no india in this body in this organization there was no india okay because of the absence of indians in this commission was seen as an insult and finally we decided to boycott this commission at every stage and in every form so we started protesting against this commission by uh, protesting go back simon go back simon in this way now guys the second one is uh, was demand of purna swarajya guys now let me tell you guys uh, there was few uh, like senior leaders of indian national congress like motilal nehru guys you know who was motilal nehru he was the father of pandit jawahar lal nehru pandit jawahar lal nehru was the first prime minister of india So guys Modila Nehru was a senior leader of Indian National Congress and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was the young leader of Indian National Congress Now people what was the difference between the ideology of these two people first of all guys senior leaders like Modila Nehru wanted uh, like like they wanted a dominant status to rule India dominant status means we should also get some right to administer our country but there were some young leaders of indian national congress like subhash chandra bose then pandit jawala nehru guys they were against the dominant status and they wanted complete independence all right and this complete independence this demand for complete independence came to know it came to be known as purna swarajya all right yeah so guys understand the difference between the nehru report nehru report was made by uh, motila nehru all right demanding dominant status but our young leaders wanted complete independence not the dominant status right now guys uh, before we move ahead with our story i hope guys you are enjoying this story and if you have any suggestions or grievances or any appreciations guys do let us know in the comment section um, and feel free to share your views in the comment section and by the way guys i already gave you three homework questions So I want you guys to tell me the answer in the comment section, all right? And next time I'm going to display the names of all those students who are going to give the answer in the comment section. Clear? Yeah? Guys, this will help me to understand, like, actually or seriously, you are paying attention to my videos or not. Now, guys, before I move ahead, let me tell you guys about our pro subscription. Very not only on YouTube, guys, but you guys can also subscribe to our. You guys can also take our pro subscription, and by taking our pro subscription. what are the advantages let me tell you first of all guys vedantu is giving you a promise the promise is improvement promise improvement promise says that let's say uh you took up a pro subscription for entire year 
and after taking our subscription for the entire year the improvement which you guys were expecting if the improvement doesn't happen as per your expectations so whatever fees you have given to vidanti entire fees will be returned back to you without asking any question this is the promise vidanti gives you guys let me tell you guys frankly no other online or no other offline institute other than vidanti will ever give you this promise a biggest reason to join vidanti but not only this guys the, there are other reasons also for joining vidanti first of all unlimited live classes like on youtube you get mix of live and uh, recordings but over there every session is going to be live and like after every 5 to 10 minutes of every session you will find quizzes and while you attempt these quizzes you actually compete with the students throughout the world because students in vidanti are not only from india they are from different countries also if you miss out the session due to any reason be it power cut or be it uh, poor connectivity or due to some family functions if you miss out the session you guys can watch the replays and these replays are going to be interactive people what do we understand from interactive replays means if uh, let's say uh, you guys can watch replays n number of times secondly you guys can participate in the quizzes you can find your name on the leaderboard so it is like a live session you guys can even download the notes which are made by the master teachers now on youtube it is very difficult for you guys to ask us doubts over here right and uh, over here all the doubts are not cleared but if you take up a pro subscription 100% of your doubts are cleared not only during the session but after the session also tests are taken assignments are given to you all right you have an access to micro courses and crash courses people what are micro courses guys these are topics topic specific courses so let's say you are already a part of our long term batches and if you wish to attend a specific topic of any subject once again you can enroll to the micro course of that topic crash courses are revision courses so these micro courses and crash courses basically students pay extra for these micro courses and crash courses who have not taken our pro subscription it is going to be absolutely free for you and that is unlimited so guys many reasons for joining vidantu how you guys can take our subscription guys it's very simple the link is there in the description box and you will also find the very first comment which is pinned okay you can use my coupon code as ad pro to get flat 10% off on all our plans okay how you guys can do let me guide you guys like uh, this is one of my video all right this is one of my video all right and uh, like you can see over here. just click on the very first comment or else you can go to show more subscribe to vedantus courses get additional 10% off just click over here you will be redirected to our website you just have to select you are you are in class 10 your grade is the grade 10th icse for 2021 22 scroll down you will get all these plans pro light pro classic pro plus first of all guys understand the difference between these three plans whatever benefits i said you till now all these are there in pro light if you want that your doubts should be solved after the session also you will get a doubts app in doubts app you guys can ask doubts after the session also are you understanding okay now if you want a personal mentor means there should be a person who will be there with you uh, wherein that person will guide you one on one guidance will help you with all your queries your academic related uh, things everything guys then you can take up a pro plus subscription so guys according to your need and according to your pocket you guys can plan accordingly and guys the fees which is given to you basically this is for entire year first of all let me tell you guys the actual fees for pro light is 30500 and for one month it is 2600 but if you apply my coupon code like ad pro apply you will get 10 flat 10% off on our yearly plan as well as for one month okay so guys every plan is available for one month you can try it for one month once then you have to take our entire year wala plan but 
one best part is like EMI option is also there. All right. Now, guys, one more thing: how you guys can download the notes? Like, let me show you. Guys, once you take up a pro subscription, you will get such kind of dashboard. Means, what are the upcoming sessions? What are the past sessions? So, you just have to go to the past sessions. You guys can watch the replays and like get notes. Like, let's take an example. This is how you guys can watch the replays. All right. You guys see it is taught by me. This is how we guys take the quizzes. All right. Either you you guys can watch the replays and like you guys can get the notes as well. Like, just go over here, click on get notes. You guys can even download the notes. Okay, ignore this drawing by the way. All right. So guys, you guys can even download the notes from here. Simple as that. So people, there are many advantages of taking a pro subscription. Guys, end of the day, what I believe, whatever fees you are giving to Vedantu actually comes down to zero. How? Guys, like the fees which you are giving to Vedantu, you just are, you are supposed to just give fees once. All right, you are you have taken up a subscription, long term subscription. After that, you will be getting an access to micro courses and crash courses, which are going to be unlimited. So Vedantu is not going to charge anything extra for this. So the more number of sessions you will attend, the lesser the price for every lecture will come. Simple, yes. But guys, promise comes with a commitment. We need some commitment from your end. What kind of commitment? You have to attend minimum 75% of the live classes and whatever tests are given to you, you have to attend minimum 75% test. If you give us such commitment, then we will promise you. In case improvement still doesn't happen as per your expectations, whatever fees you have given to Vedantu, entire fees will be given back to you without any question asked. Alright, so in this way you guys can take our subscription. Chalo, let's move ahead guys with our topic. Now guys, let's understand about Gandhi Irwin Pact. Guys, remember I told you guys about Irwin Gandhi ji had written a letter stating 11 demands to Irwin and none of the demands were accepted by Irwin. So guys, at that time Gandhi ji, there was a pact, an agreement which was signed between Gandhi and Irwin. Alright, and this agreement came to be known as Gandhi Irwin Pact. Let's understand what happened in this agreement. Basically, I guess in this agreement, Irwin had a demand that we have to end, we have to stop the civil disobedience movement. So Irwin requested Gandhiji that stop the civil disobedience movement. Gandhiji said, okay, we will cooperate with you, but under some conditions. What was the condition? Under this pact, the British government agreed to release those political prisoners who had remained non violent simple as that so all those freedom fighters all those uh, like political prisoners who were uh, behind the bars who were in jail Britishers agreed to remove those political prisoners from the jail simple as that and at the same time Gandhiji also agreed to stop the civil disobedience movement and this pact between Gandhi and Irwin came to be known as Gandhi Irwin pact all right now and guys, finally, Congress uh, finally uh, decided to be a part of the uh, uh, this one roundtable conference. So basically, guys, what was roundtable conference? Roundtable conference was a meeting between Indian representatives and the Britishers in London. Total three meetings took place between 1930 and 1932. Basically, one in 1930, second in 1931, and third in 1932. Okay, simple as that. What was the outcome of these conferences? Basically, this conference was a failure. Simple as that. One word answer. But guess some information is given to you. Let's have a look. The first roundtable conference was between 1930 and 31, was held in London. The Congress did not participate in it because Gandhiji was in jail and he represented Indian National Congress. The second roundtable conference began in London in September 1931 when he was released from the jail when there wasn't there was a pact between Gandhiji and Viceroy Irwin and it lasted for about three months. Mahatma Gandhi participated in it as the sole representative of the Congress, the only representative of the Congress. The third roundtable conference was attended by 46 delegates and the Indian National Congress refused to attend this conference. Simple as that guys, the outcome of this roundtable conference was a failure. 
simple as that so guys what was the impact of civil disobedience movement like we saw the impact of non cooperation movement let's understand what was the impact of cdm movement guys first it shattered people's faith in the british government finally we realized that britishers are not going to help india they are not going to help indians they are not going to fulfill our demands simple as that we lost all our trust over the british government which we had it revived the will to fight the elections it deepened the social roots for the freedom struggle and it popularized new methods of propaganda like prabhat feri's like morning uh, morning walks theek hai pamphlets so through all these things we started spreading our ideas and this is how the movement continued what happened next we will discuss in the next video guys okay this is my weekly schedule take the screenshot of this and be a part of each and every session of mine on vedantu's 9th and 10th english channel thank you so much guys for attending my session the link is there in the description box for this telegram group you guys can join this telegram group and once again guys the link is there in the description box for our pro subscription so if you wish to be a part of our uh vedantus platform wherein we teach live sessions and all the ad advantages which i said you you guys can be a part of my sessions use my coupon code as ad pro to get flat 10% off thank you so much guys for attending my session i hope you understand most of the part so i'll see you guys in my next video till then take very very good care of yourself bye bye take care jai